Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first major project, the Symmetry Project, aka Faces and Faces. What you're going to need today is a ruler, a sketching pencil, not a 5B, never sketch with the 5B, it's just too dark, uh, and of course your sketchbooks. So when you take a look at this, what do you see? Well, if you focus on the center, you see a vase. If you focus on the outside, you see a face. This concept is called the Rubin vase, which uses an ambiguous or bistable image. Basically, what this image does is you, uh, regardless of where you focus your eye, whether it's on the center or the outside, um, both are interesting parts of the composition. This is a concept that actually exists in real life. See here, do you still see the, va uh, the faces? The faces are comprised of what I call negative space, the space around the object. When artists kind of first start to sketch, they often focus solely on the object that they're sketching and kind of dismiss things like details or backgrounds. But as artists, we want to focus on the entirety of our work, right? Considering both of these things. So the main goal of this project is to teach you to focus and learn the skills of how to look at the world like an artist. And we're gonna do this through a variety of objectives. First, we're going to use creativity. We're going to create original designs, and these designs are going to use detail, okay? Next, we're going to create a symmetrical, symmetrical drawing. Okay, not only will this, of course, create the Rubin vase uh, design, but in addition, uh, by training our eyes to kind of look at one thing and recreate it, we're training our brains to really stop and take a moment to look. This is probably one of the most difficult things you'll do in this class, is really just stopping and looking at objects. It seems simple, but can be surprisingly difficult. Next, we're going to focus on balance. Again, that consideration of the whole image, an important artistic skill. And finally, any project we do always brings in previously learned skills um, whereby adding a new element, taking old elements and adding new elements of art. So we've already ex uh, explored value and texture. Now we're exploring space and shape. So again, I would like you to add, when we shape these, please utilize two of the uh, values or textures we covered in class, uh, also known as pencil techniques. These include hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, scumbling, or blending. Please include at least two in your final. So let's take a look at a variety of ways students have interpreted this project. Again, as long as you fill the four objectives that we're looking at, symmetry, balance, creativity, and pencil technique, you fit the requirements. So one way you could approach this project to create that balance and also creativity is to exaggerate a facial feature. I really like the way this artist uh, exaggerated the mouth and, um, and sort of forehead shapes to create both an engaging outside and inside space. You could add detail that kind of cuts into the space, such as the hair or the nose or lip ring. You could add detail, another great way to add creativity, by adding interior design, such as this hair. You could also use a variety of different pencils to create different uh, gradations of value. If your design is a little bit simpler, such as the one we see here on the bottom, um, the bottom left, using gradient shading is a great way to add that element of creativity. If you don't know what to do for shading, gradient is always a good option. Whether you do it top to, top to bottom, inside to outside, outside to inside, gradient shading is great. Gradient shading, gradient shading is also a great way to get extra credit on your project because um, I see that you've utilized many pencil techniques to achieve that smooth transition. So oftentimes when I present projects, I like to present kind of like, of course, my best examples, but also sometimes my middle of the road examples. Um, so again, considering our four objectives in mind, we're going to do what I call a critique. A critique is when we look at each other's work and give feedback, focusing on the strengths, or what to work on, or excuse me, or what works, and our weaknesses, what to work on. So first, I always like to start with our strengths. What works in this? Bearing in mind the creativity, balance, symmetry, and pencil technique. 
Well, I would say that the creativity is on point. It's very good. I like the way that they did the hair and the nose um, and the mouth. Very good. Um, pencil technique is pretty good, although I do only see one. Um, and then finally, so those are the things that are working, but this artist could probably spend a little bit more time working on the balance and the symmetry. But you're like, Mrs. Howe, that does look pretty symmetrical. Well, again, take the time to really look. Focus your eye on the hair. Focus your eye on the nose. Focus your eye on the neck. Do you start to see those symmetrical inaccuracies? Again, once you really start to look, they start to appear in front of you. If you don't want to do a face, that is fine. Again, as long as it fits the four objectives and the, it fits the parameters of this assignment. You could do a design. You could do an animal. What I really like about this one is that although like, I really love the creativity, so they got extra credit for creativity. That balanced out the fact that the symmetry in the antlers isn't quite there. I have this project in here because I wanted to, I want you guys to try ambitious ideas. Don't do simple things just because you're afraid of the symmetry. I love to see new ideas. That's always my favorite. So ladies and gentlemen, again, don't be afraid to try ambitious creative ideas. That opens you up for the opportunity for extra credit. Um, you don't have to think about them as a solid figure that's reflected. Think about them as two figures interacting with each other. And finally, you don't have to do something that exists in reality. You could do a design of some kind or an abstract shape. Um, this in, these shapes are inspired by griffins. So again, um, it doesn't have to be something that, you know, exists. It can be imaginary. The requirements for this project are that you submit to me thumbnails and rough drafts. Thumbnails are basically mini sketches of a final. I always like to see kind of a mini version before we jump into a final. And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, um, it's much easier to do a tiny drawing than a big drawing. You can try out things without kind of what I call like high risk. If you don't like it, it's okay. Just do another one. So again, We'll be doing many thumbnails in our classes. Our two methods of developing ideas are mind maps and thumbnails, and these are the two we will use the most. Um, so again, I would like you to bribe, provide me four different ideas. We're going to choose one of these ideas to do our rough draft, where we refine it. The thumbnails are very small, only three inches by three inches. Our rough draft is larger, the same dimension as our final, seven by seven. We're going to be copying our rough draft onto our final. Um, so it behooves us to really take our time with a rough draft. The thumbnails are quick. The rough draft is um, more given more attention. So again, one, please complete the thumbnails and rough draft, and then we'll move on to our final. If you have any questions, please let me know. And again, don't forget to photograph your work and submit it to your Google submission slide. Good luck, and if you have any questions, again, please let me know.